a new report says that Australians, and to be honest, people in Europe and North America could do this as well, can cut their electricity costs by 90% by doing these few things, electrifying, 90%. But at the same time, they can also eliminate their gasoline or petrol costs as well. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. I have done this, so this report is correct. The report is probably, I think, potentially understating the savings you can make. They're saying you can save 90%. I think you can save 100%. In fact, I think you can save more than 90% because of the fact that you're also, the report doesn't actually include what I just mentioned, which, which is you can eliminate gas your gas bills. Gas bills, you can eliminate your petrol bills, as in your gasoline, petrol, and gas bills. So this is actually a really good feeling when you look at your bills and you say, wow, I'm paying virtually nothing in comparison to what I used to be. Sort of like, imagine you have a mortgage for your house or a big loan for a car and you pay it off. It sort of feels like that. You, you don't feel locked in anymore. You don't feel like you're living under some kind of burden. Almost like imagine you've got, you, you're carrying around a backpack all the time and it's full of rocks and it's just your life. You've got to carry that around. That's your stress of life. And all of a sudden you can just take the backpack off, just put it on the ground and just walk off. You feel really light and you feel a lot less stressed. So this report says Australians, and to be honest, a similar concept applies everywhere around the world, could reduce their bills by 90% if they make their homes more energy efficient. Debate on how to generate energy is important, but it misses the point, analysts say when you can get these savings by using solar batteries and also efficient appliances. The debate over whether Australia gets its energy, well, where it gets its energy from, has been crazy. It's played out like a comic book death battle between coal and renewables in recent years. Obviously, Donald Trump is trying to keep all the ancient coal power plants still on in the United States. And we've got some politicians trying to do the same thing here in Australia. According to Luke Menzel, the Chief Executive Officer of the Energy Efficiency Council, there is a solution, a really simple one. Discussions over coal versus renewables, the role of gas and the speed of infrastructure rollout to bring renewables online, it's important. But there's a whole other conversation we should be talking about. How to get rid of your energy bills. The latest of several reports to make the case for boosting energy efficiency are from the Institute for Energy Economics and Financial Analysis, or IEEFA. So this is not just some YouTuber talking about statistics he thinks sound good, but they're real. The IEEFA found Australian households could cut their power bills by more than 90% by implementing a range of energy efficiency measures. Released on Wednesday, the report calculated potential savings of between 82 and 94%, if households installed solar and a home battery and used efficient appliances such as heat pumps, air conditioners, and electric induction cooktops. Now, I personally think you don't actually need to use um, heat pumps. You don't need to use electric induction cook cooktops. I think air conditioners are a, are a really good idea. I've installed them in this house here. I've installed one in nearly every room because they're actually quite cheap now. And I find even in the middle of summer, like the hottest part of summer here in Australia, I'm running all the air conditioners pretty much every day. I find that um, the cost to my bill is basically nothing. I, the, the amount of power they use is so low, it's negligible. I'll show you a power bill very soon, but yeah, with them on versus with them off to give you an idea. But honestly, when I show people the actual electricity, they all these air conditioners consume, split system air conditioners, they're quite shocked by how low it is. The report said though here, with federal and state government policies to incentivize home energy efficiency, a goal of halving household energy bills in a decade is actually achievable. In other words, Australia on average and the United States and Europe should be able to halve their electricity bills within the next 10 years. We've seen over the last few years that energy prices and cost of living has become an emerging concern, but the debate has been around one-off rebates or debates 
on how to generate power, said Jay Gordon. Jay, that's important, but it misses the point when you see these 80 to 90% cost reductions that householders can implement themselves. And I've been saying for years now, you've got to be a rich man if you don't have solar. If you don't have solar, it's kind of like saying, you know what, I like driving my V8. It's, it's a fuel guzzler and I'm willing to pay for it. Yeah, same thing. And when I hear this stuff, I've seen people make these comments, solar is only right for some people. Mm. Well, there's 10 million households in Australia, 4 million of them have solar. And millions more of them could have solar, but they don't yet. So actually, it's, it's right for everyone, pretty much, unless your roof is completely shaded. Now, some roofs have a bit of shading on them, but new, newer solar panels now, uh, especially the ones from Longy, they have the ability to work at the same capacity, even if one panel is shaded. It'll, only, it'll basically prevent that one panel from putting out power, which is a new feature. Anyway, last month, energy experts congratulated the Victorian government for a suite of measures to improve home energy efficiency, including a ban on gas heating and hot water systems in new homes from January 2027. The Albanese government's new $2.3 billion home battery program, which kicked off last week, provided discounts of about 30% or more on batteries. Wednesday's IEEFA report projected that households could make savings of up to 94% if they do this. Install an eight kilowatt rooftop solar system and a 10 kilowatt hour battery. Now, I personally don't recommend you do that. I think that's a really bad idea. Install a 13 kilowatt hour battery. That's what I recommend. The average installation size for roof, rooftop solar in Australia is actually about 11 kilowatt hours as of the last few months. But go 13, that's the biggest you can comfortably handle for most households on single phase power. The more panels, the better, the more you'll save. Putting an eight kilowatt system on is doesn't make sense because you'll save more money if you go with a 13 kilowatt hour system and the price is only a small amount more. The cost of the panels is not really what you're paying for. You're paying for the installation costs. You're paying for the laborer's time. And if they're already there doing the job, you might as well get them to put a few more panels up on the roof, it makes sense. 10 kilowatt hour battery, yeah, I mean, that's relatively small. I actually think go bigger than that. I've got a 25 kilowatt hour battery. In addition, they recommend using reverse cycle air conditioning instead of gas or electric heaters. That's a no-brainer. My uh, Mine is on right now, and it's amazing. It's actually using right now 200 watts of electricity, and it's heating this room really well. Swapped gas or old electric water heaters for heat pumps. You can do that, but I don't think it's necessary. Um, gas or old electric hot water heaters uh, heat pumps will save you a bit of money, but it is an upfront cost as well. Replace cooktops with electric induction. I don't think most people use uh, all that much gas on their cooktops, but that's something you can do because then you can get your gas turned off. The IEFA modeling did not take into account the further gains that Gordon said can be made by improving the thermal efficiency of homes, puts more insulation in your roof. That'll make a big difference. This house is quite well insulated, so that really helps. How well they can hold heat in the winter or keep heat out in summer can definitely influence your electricity bills. More thermally efficient homes can give households the option to use more daytime energy from solar or either preheat or pre-cool their homes ahead of the evening peak. Menzel said that through technology such as heat pumps and solar, they are well established. Policies to encourage their take up are a challenge. With electrification and efficiency, you're talking about a much broader range of product types and interventions that look different in parts of it, that look different in different parts of the economy. But that's where we need to go, he said. Now, Australian homes use about a quarter of the country's electricity and account for more than 10% of greenhouse gas emissions. But what the automotive industry also accounts for a huge amount of energy, yeah, imported energy in terms of petrol, petroleum, and diesel. And that's another way you can save money, right? Your solar system you are going to easily be able to top up that battery or basically most days through summer in Australia. And you're going to have extra energy left over. If you charge your electric car, right, you can get basically free electricity. And yeah, I get it. Um, you might not want to charge during the day from Monday to Friday. Maybe you're driving your car to work. But there are plans where you can charge your EV after 12 p.m. at night virtually incredibly cheap up to about 10 cents or less per kilowatt hour in australia and that is way that is miles cheaper 
than paying for petrol or diesel. And then you can also charge on the weekends during the day using extra solar that you're probably not going to use with your 13 kilowatt hour system. So that's basically the situation I'm in. And I, pro I know that many of you are in that situation as well. If you haven't made the switch, I encourage you to do so because not really based on emotional grounds like saving the planet and reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Those things are important, but even more so on just saving you money. There's so many reasons why it makes economic sense to get solar, a battery, and an electric car. And if you're going to install a battery, you could potentially consider going vehicle to grid or even just vehicle to home. You don't necessarily even have to send electricity back into the grid, but you certainly can use your car to power your home. What are your thoughts, guys? Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.